The Sci Fora Film Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Cyphora Film Podcast. I am Andy Walker and I have with me as always my son Scott. Hello Scott. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Well, you know, I'm marginally better than I have been, slightly worse than I was before I wasn't as bad as I am. Uh. That's about as good as it gets so far. Um there you go. Well, now this week, um, as we had a hell of a lot of horror last week, <laughs> a hell of a lot of horror, uh, I thought this week we'd go purely sci fi. And these three films are definitely purely sci fi. I would like to say before we start, and for people that watch this, I, I, uh, obviously, we know that we put the videos up in one full long one and then we broke it down into sections. I appreciate and I love the fact that there are people who have taken the time out to Absolutely. watch full on video to sit there and like I know people that have got to the to the point where it's broken up and have gone, Oh, we'll listen to it another day. But the, the seeing the fact there are people who listen to the full length one and sat and watched it, I I appreciate it so yeah, much. Yeah, we really take in. We do really I mean we really appreciate anyone watching any of our podcasts, yeah. but that, that one was a real marathon and it was yeah, to, to, I mean it was I didn't I didn't realise until it went up actually how long the video was. Yeah, I mean it was it was long enough for us to do it, but it was yeah, it's and then adding adding in the, the video bit in the middle was, was kind of yeah, exactly. it was just all that and to sort of go through everything we normally do. I appreciate the fact that people have taken the time out to sit on what 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 I will also say, long, I think is. Yeah, I will also say I tried very hard to put links up to all of the films that I could find that were on YouTube uh, in, and try links and to the films and trailers and things like that that were on YouTube. Unfortunately, none of the uh, way, way we do it, uh, Anchor, Spotify, and YouTube, none of them give you enough space to be able to put up all of that amount of films. Yeah. So I kind of didn't have the chance to put up the links to all of the films, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry about that. But I did manage to put links up to all of the people that were selling things there. And I did put link up for the Romford Film Festival, uh, Horror Film Festival, and for uh, Riddler Thriller uh, for the guys in, in Wales. Um, so there you go. Uh so yes, so this week we're doing two short films and a full-length feature film. Uh, and we are starting off with a short film called Trojan. Uh, this is uh, made by Opex Films, uh, directed and written by Lee, uh, sorry, Leo Harper Gow. And the cast, Daniel Godfrey, William Arthur, James uh, Bennett, and Nina Deshinga. Um so yes, this is uh, it's an interesting film. I thought yes, very good idea about. Um, I mean, you know, the basic idea is about sort of uh, uh, virtual reality. Um, yeah, the whole, whole if you die in real life, you not you stay in virtual reality. And yeah, so yeah, but, was the more trapped in virtual reality, I think, is when it's in there. So yeah. But yeah, no, it's a very interesting idea. That idea of being, going into virtual reality, you know, as you say, if you die, do you stay there, or what happens? Um, I thought the acting was pretty good. I'm not sure why they played only you by the platters in the middle of it because it didn't seem to fit with what was going on at all. Yeah, I did. I did wonder as well. Um, I agree with the acting. I know. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but the. I don't know if it is again because I'm getting older because of the fact I just it's I've got to the point where it just it 
annoys me now. I get the fact that there wasn't an excessive amount of swearing in it. But the word, some of the words that we used are a bit, a bit extreme for a lot of audience. Yeah, maybe. I think if they, they I'm like, no, I'm not saying. Uh, I looked at it more as sort of the whole judgmental side. Of that. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like certain words that we used. Yeah. So um, it's just, and I get the fact that obviously a lot of people use them um, out on the street and it's sort of stuff like that. I get that, but it's just I don't know. It just seemed it seemed like it was a bit of an, a, an yeah. extreme use of what, uh, language to use. I know. Yeah. I mean, it didn't necessarily have to be there for the film, but yeah, it kind of. Yeah, I can't. Oh, right, it doesn't take away from the film. No, I just I looked at it as the fact that I know that I know there's certain people that you that listen to their words and then twit off. But it, so I mean, it's, you're losing. Yeah. There is a chance of losing certain people in an audience with that. Uh, it's still a really good film. Yeah, no, I get I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting for me because I thought for a while when he went goes into this place and starts being interviewed by the guy yeah. who's, who's running the, <laughs> the program, I thought it was going to turn into a comedy because yeah, the way I've... he was doing the interviewing was kind of like oh is this going to be a comedy is he going to start cracking jokes yeah because he was edging towards it but then he didn't <laughs> which is kind of weird yeah I've got... i couldn't understand right yes he's upset because his sister has disappeared he gets asked to go to this place where he knows she has a connection to mm -hmm. right and he isn't asking about his sister when he gets there. He doesn't come in and say, well, where's my sister? What are you, what's going on? What's happening? No, yeah, there is that. That would be the first thing that comes down. My, uh, the sort of the idea of that is sort of, right, so what do you know? What, why, why are you involved? In but I get the fact, obviously, unless it's just meant to look at it, that's done off screen or whatever. But yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the things that I would be doing. It's the whole, what do you know? Yeah. But I will say... It's, I think this film, as much as we're saying this is pure sci-fi, which it is, I think with the shock that happens, yeah, with what happens to him, the main or the 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 brother, is very gory. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, it's, it's quite, it's quite a, 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 a. It's sort of a shock factor in it, and it, it was an yeah. amazing, it was amazingly done. Oh yeah, now the effects were really good. I, I mean, I liked all all the stuff inside the. The program when they when he was inside the program the cinematography there the the color right the coloring all that was really well done and as yeah. you say that that shock factor that when he's attacked that kind of really was yeah it was really good effect yeah it was, it, it was that shit certainly the shock factor but even that it was done like i've seen a few films where that's been done and they've they've over dramatized it they've over yeah over shown it and now i think that was done enough as that shock factor for you to sit there and go, oh my god and then then go to the next bit, and I think that was yeah. very well done, very See, well. I liked the film. For some reason, I don't quite know why. I wasn't completely sure about the ending. The ending kind of no. left it in a bit. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it 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 seemed. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's just me. Maybe I read it too much. It, it was a very creepy ending. Yeah, like, the, 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 I'm not putting too much. <coughs> oh, sorry, in context that isn't there. But for me, it was just weird to. Their brother and sister, and they do all that, and but it's just the whole. I want to spend the rest of my life with that. It's just it's a bit weird that the yeah, but it just all felt a bit kind of not. Yeah, not, it just it didn't seem to. It's sort of faded out. Yeah, and it's it, yeah. but it was it know. was okay. I think it was a really good film and really well made. I, I just there were a couple of elements to it that kind of just weren't quite. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's, is cinematography for any effects, but I think it's just it almost, yeah, it just seemed for me just fizzled out at the end. Yeah. Okay, now on to our second short film, <laughs> which is called Alientologists. Uh, this is on Dust, so I don't know when it was put onto Dust, but the writer and director is Tyler Rabin Rabinowitz. Uh, the cast is uh, Danny. Gardner, Kurt Kozlak, Macy Sullivan, and Trevor Brooks. Now, this is a film about aliens collecting debris and human artifacts 
from an exploded Earth. Yes. Well, and that's the main. That's the that's, first half of the that's, film. Well, that's what the, that's what the film is about. Then what happens is they have a bit of an <laughs> argument and everything between themselves, and they lose all of the stuff that they've collected. Yep. And then one of them collects a jukebox. A CD, a CD jukebox. A jukebox. And he starts presses buttons on it, and he starts listening to some jazz. And he also happens to collect a huge collection of <laughs> top shoes, which they then take a take on wearing and dancing to the jazz. Now, I'm just going to say what I've written down here. Right? <laughs> okay. What I've written is, I love this film. <laughs> Absolutely love this film. This is one of my favourite short films of all time. It has excellent effects, good makeup, great acting, it's funny, it's interesting, and it has tap-dancing aliens. What more could you want? Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I watched this earlier, and as I do with most of the time when I do this in, in general, uh, when I watch these, is I, I watch them normally sort of in the background when like, uh, Amy is, is watching, and all I sort of heard from my, over my shoulder is, what on earth are you watching? I didn't explain to her the film. Normally I do. I go, I'm going to watch these films and this is what they're about, just right. in case she looks over my shoulder. I didn't. I didn't read the synopsis out there. And she didn't look over my shoulder. It's like, what on earth are you watching? And part of me wanted to go, uh, it's sort of that almost that guilty pleasure film of going, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just, I sat there like, I said afterwards, like, I can't put into words without sounding a little bit crazy. And I was watching a film about that dancing aliens. It is fantastic. I have watched this film now. I mean, seriously, uh, two days ago was the first time I watched it. I have yep. watched this film now six times because I just enjoy watching it that much. Yeah, I, as I say, I agree, I agree with you. He's, it's... <laughs> the the makeup to it is amazing. Cinematography is amazing. The set design looks great. Um, the balance to it, the light and all that, is is it's it was the whole thing. It was the whole factor of like okay, they're going through yeah, going through the thing, and I was like, it stopped on Sinatra, I'm like yeah, okay, and it started dancing, started music, and I was like, oh okay, maybe it's just gonna be they're gonna discover music. And then, the other, then he sat down and then the box came up. I'm like, what earth is in the box? Yeah. And then he dropped some and I was like, oh, for God's sake. But like, I didn't even have to see the shoes. And I see him and I was like, oh, I know where this is going. And then putting them on and started dancing. And I was like, this is just, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's one of them films that you, you you didn't know you needed, but after you've watched it, you, you know that you, like, you're glad that he was there. Absolutely. I I. I just love watching it. It makes me feel happy watching it. Yeah, it's it's the thing is as well is the fact that it starts off with one of them. Yeah, and then like, it's sort of that infectious dancing is that sort of happens, and the girl, the but, female one, comes in and starts it, and it's just even even outside of all that. What I love is things like they don't even try to give you a translation of the alien language no. because you can pick up from what they're saying what they're saying, even though you don't know what the words are. Yeah, it's certain words. Like obviously, the certain word bit they did for junk was on quite obvious. But, but yeah, yeah, it was certain bits. You, it was that whole. It's like it's like when you see someone speaking another language you know, and hearing them argue. You're like, you know what they're saying. Yeah. You don't need to, you don't need to. But it's it was great, and I loved it. I absolutely love this film. I I think it's fantastic. <sighs> I, I want to I want I want to find out more about these people that made it because. Right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I want to find out more about the people who made this because it is just fantastic in every way. Yeah, I, it's I, it's one of them films. I'm saying I I I can't say enough. It's one of the films that I didn't know I needed to watch. I didn't know I needed it in my life, but I'm so yeah. glad it's there. Absolutely, I'm so I'm, glad I'm, we've got a link to it. And I'm so I, glad that we could go back and watch it. I I I hope never to stop watching this film. <laughs> yeah, it's, watch, watch this film on and off for the rest of my life. It's, it's hilarious, and I just. It's, it's a perfect film. It is. It's got uh, almost it. It's got everything you probably wouldn't even know you needed from a film. 
it's got everything in the right amount as well. The comedy doesn't overpower it. No. It's a sci-fi of it. And even the music and the dancing don't overpower the sci-fi of it because you cannot get away from the fact that these three people are aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Aliens that know perfect tat and can oh, appreciate absolutely. and can appreciate Frank Sinatra. It's, it's you know good jazz music and, and tap dancing. What more could you want? <laughs> exactly. Okay, well that was um, I'm I'm so glad we watched it. Yeah. Um, okay, on to our feature film now. Our feature film this week is going back to 1957. This is the second of the British Quatermass films, Quatermass yeah. 2, uh, directed by Val Guest, written, uh, the screenplay was written by Val Guest and Nigel, uh, Nigel Neal, who is, you know, and it's a Hammer film, and so, you know, Nigel Neal wrote loads of screenplays and things for uh, sci-fi and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what did you think? I knew you were going to come to <laughs> this is the, this, the problem is that it's it's a typical 50s film it's the yeah. whole nothing happens until probably the last 20 20 30 minutes yeah and it's a lot of a long explanations to what is going on yes but it's a again though it's a typical old classic sci-fi british sci-fi film Absolutely. It's got the exaggeration of stuff, everything that was in it. It's got the the right amount of explanation, but not actually tell you what's going on. Yeah, and I've got to admit, it's, again, no, it's the acting. Obviously, for the time, it's probably really good. It, it's bits of it that um, I thought were a bit dating, it, but it's it's still got good acting. The cinematography, I still think, is really good. The set, set designs were quite good. Yeah, well, I, I mean, to be it was honest, a bit bizarre, but well, the, the thing about it is, it's interesting because uh, nineteen fifty, uh, I think it was fifty five, somewhere around there. I could be wrong; it might have been a bit earlier, but um, somewhere around the mid fifties, um, they opened up a new oil refinery in Essex, and you will find that. 90% of the science fiction films made in England after that date used that as a set. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that were on TV and on film yeah. use that as a set because of the fact that it is so, it looks so odd compared to everything around it. The only things that they did kind of add in were the domes. Yeah. that Because they, they didn't, they weren't there. But I mean, I don't know, it's, yeah, as you say, it's a fairly standard British sci-fi film of the 50s. Some slightly dodgy acting, but mostly pretty good. It's got some decent effects. The aliens themselves are a bit odd. Um, it, but I like the idea because it's not often you get an inv alien invasion idea that is a kind of stealth alien invasion where they kind of do it yeah. gradually and, and then they kind of use they take over people to make it so that they can then come and they come in bits and, and kind of like form themselves together it was such yeah. an interesting I, I, idea I was trying to think I don't think I can actually think of any apart from this one I don't think there's any that spring to mind but yeah no I agree with you the, fact that the idea behind it is very very done very well done I love the I love the fact that it was told the dark side of the earth. Yeah. It sort of almost made me feel like, hang on, surely that would move. So, I know, but so just say Earth's atmosphere. But yeah, no, so it's it, the whole... it would mean It would mean that if, if it was the dark side of the earth, then it, they would have to keep moving in rotation. They would have to keep still in rotation. In ro what's it's the rotation yeah. of the earth? But it would mean that at certain times, we would be on the dark side of the earth and therefore yeah. we would be able to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did think as well though when they said dark turn of the earth I went big Floyd missed the opportunity there. <laughs> um, no, so it's so the, the acting to the some of the acting was amazing to Sid James I don't know, he's just he's something else. He's, and he's, great. he's he's just a great actor, but I just I love the fact he wasn't in it for that long. No. No and he's just great in it. The, the exaggeration of him overacting of him dying as well was amazing. Yeah, no. 
it was it was standard dramatic sort of uh, license <laughs> for the 1950s, late 1950s. But no, I mean this is a classic film, and it's it's kind of the the big thing for me throughout all of the Quake and Mass films, though. Well, all of the ones that had um, I can't remember his name now. Um, <coughs> I can't remember his name. Oh, what? the actor. What a guy played Quake and Mass. Yeah. Um, Brian. Is it Brian? Yeah, Brian Donnelly. Donnelly. Brian Don Levy. Don Levy, sorry, yeah. 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 I mean all of the all of the Quake Mass films that have got Brian Don Levy in. My big thing with it is why nobody punched him in the face because he is such an annoying, <laughs> arrogant twat in all of them. He's, I've got a bit though, he's one of the times though you sit there and watch like even this one, it's the second one yeah. to it, and it's sort of he's got them connected to it. No one still believes him. No. It comes to these people and they've gone, this is going on. And they've had no. You would have thought after the first, like the second time, even the third time, they would have gone, maybe we should pay a bit of attention. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing as well that I liked with this is it has got, it's got a whole slew of, of, uh, of, of English character actors and people who would go on to become famous. Apart yeah. from Sid James, who you said about. I mean, you, Brian Forbes, who went on to be a huge film director, was in it. William Franklin, Michael Ripper. Um, yeah. And um, also uh, uh, the uh, the other guy who plays Trigger in uh, Only Fools yeah. and Horses, his dad was in this film. Okay. So, you know, I mean, there were, there were quite a few people in this you would recognise from lots of other things. Yeah, as I was saying, there's a, there's a lot of them. That were in it, and there was a. Is the thing is as well that the the actors that were in it were obviously a big names for that time as well. Oh, they were recognisable faces and names, right? Yeah. Time. But like you said, there's a lot of them that went on to do things, and obviously like Sid James's back catalogue sort of everyone sort of knows a lot of them. But I'm a lot of the people, like we said, were made their career sort of kick started their careers for it, or they went on to do other things, or. They went on to make better films. Well, this is, so. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is what Hammer were best, were really good yeah. at. They, they could, they employed lots of really good British character actors who then were in loads of their films and went on to be in lots and lots of other films. And yeah. some of them went on to do bigger and better things. Some of them just also, kind of carried on doing the same sort of thing they've been doing all their life, you know. Well, the thing is, if it was like, I'm not, I'm not taking a lot away from the time, but. A lot of stuff in, especially England at the time, sort of late 50s, early 60s, there wasn't a lot for, especially for certain places that people came from, a lot for people to do. They were either, like, they they, they stuck in the dead end places. So people yeah. like, like Vera Day, who's in yeah. it, she, the fact that she was from uh, Forest Gate, which at the time, there wasn't a lot in that area. Yeah. So you you are you got stuck in the same place as then to actually give her a chance and say, look, here you go. Yeah. There's a role. Yeah. It might not be a big role, but there's a role. Yeah. And to help her push it through that way. And the same with the same like, like all the other people who are in it and it gave them them connections to push on further. And this is yeah, okay, it's a typical film that probably doesn't stand well with the test of time nowadays, but well, I mean, it's a still a cult film. It is, and as I say, I think it's got a really great idea behind the story, which is is really you know it, it gives it a lot more um, kudos if you like. It, it kind of makes it a, a better film because of the fact that it has got that good story. If it had a naff story, you'd look at it and go, "Oh, it's all right." Oh, it's the thing it's, it's, as well. So I've been sitting there like a lot. Even all of the quite mass films, you think about it, they've all got sort of. And they've all got obviously certain bits in them that link them up together, but they're all unique ideas. And for the well, time, for that sort of time, for people to go, look, this is an idea that we've got. This is how we do it, and then then write it. Like I said, the whole the whole idea that they've done it to the whole stealth invasion, yeah, that is done this way, and they're done through to then build up a, a, a way of making it seem safe for them to come down. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that like it, and yeah. it's 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 one of the films that 
I think a lot of a lot of the films that Hammer especially put out were all certain ones were ahead of their time. I think I mean a lot of it comes down to the writing. Nigel Neal wrote some amazing stories. It's still it's still one of my favourite ghost stories ever. He wrote, which is called the Stone Tape. Yeah. It's just fantastic. His imagination was incredible. And the stories he came up with were, were great. And, you know, I mean, for, for the time this was made, it was kind of, you, you're looking at, you know, British film industry it's, at that time didn't yeah. have, the, even then didn't have the sort of money that the Hollywood films had. No, I've, I've just had a look at this now. And, okay, I know that at the time of the, say late 50s this was a lot of money but when we've looked at films from that were done in hollywood and la at the same sort of time it's like a quarter of the budget i think it said it had a budget of ninety two thousand for hundred and seventeen thousand. which okay nowadays is probably what most actors get paid for a day's work but yeah. to sit there and think about the fact that at the time films that were being put out in hollywood and la mm. and america were ones that had half a million pounds worth of budget and, and and you got to look at the fact you know there was no cgi there was no oh. uh, you know, special effects as such it was all practical effects and and things things drawn painted on glass and things like that you know it, it was yeah so it was quite incredibly incredible and it's great it to watch it. i love watching these old films because of the fact that it kind of reminds me just how good um filmmaking can be yeah, it's just like, I was sitting there thinking about it. We were talking about how good thing the prop design for the cocoons. Yeah. They were. That was, for me, is like, is a mind blowing factor. The fact that that's someone's thought of that and they've like the writers thought of and they've been able to bring that out into the situation and the whole, the way that they were done for them cracking and going that. I think it was amazingly done. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, it's, it's just uh, I, it, I enjoy as I say, I enjoy watching old films sometimes, and I, and I, one of the reasons I enjoy it because it does remind me that the old older films can be really good, and and uh, that filmmaking, you know, there were people then. To be honest, there were people then who were making better films than some of the films that come out now. Yeah, no, I was going to say that. The, the... I, as much as it was boring, uh, for me, it's not boring, but it was stretched out. It's the fact slow. that when it got, yeah, yeah, it got the slow. The pacing is but, great. But that's, as I put it down to, that's a typical 50s film. At the time, that's how they were made. But yeah. I sort of looked at this and I'm like, I've actually had more of enjoyment watching this today than, honestly, than a few films that I've watched out, or just out of my personal, like on my personal time, to sit there and go, yeah. you know what, I'll, I want to watch a film but it's on the bar my friend I'm, like, I'm bored out of my skull yeah and like uh, this this one i sat there and I'm like yeah okay it's it's stretched out but i want to see what happens i want to know what happens yeah that's the thing i think the thing that keeps you going keep you going is the fact that it's a really well written story yeah and as much as i say it does pay homage to the actors and the actresses they're in it the writing of it is very well done absolutely Okay, so there we go. We've got uh, Trojan, which was was okay. It wasn't a bad film. It was a, it was a pretty good film. I'm not too overly too sure about about it in places, but it was it was alright. Alientologist, which was possibly the best film I've seen in years. And yeah. uh, I, will to, I will say I'm going to have to play that to Amy just just to show. And it uh, might be my sort. Of, it's going to be my go-to happy film. Yeah. <laughs> and Quake Mass Two, which is uh, you know is it. 1957, great 1957 British sci-fi film, really worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Scott, for being part of that and doing that. Right. Um, thank you to everybody and anybody out there listening. Uh, next episode, we're going to try and do a review of a short film that was shown at the Romford Horror Film Festival and an interview with the filmmakers. And we may do a review of one of the longer films that was at the Horror Film Festival, which I think you saw, I'm not sure. I'll have, I'll have to check that. Uh, yeah, I knew you were going to ask me that. 
<laughs> now I've got to look it up. Um, because it was emailed to me that I, I had a, a screener emailed to me for it. Oh. Uh, where are we? It, um, while I'm looking this up, by the way, thank you very much to Richard Roundtree, uh, from the Fisheye Film Festival, who uh gave me the honor of being on the judging panel for the animated films at the fisheye film festival 2024 um i was very happy to do that and uh thank you very much for that yes uh um, nice to see you. it's not as weird well i know obviously dad was one of the tribes but it's the fact that happy to help with things like that people that people that want if they want their films put out, they want to review they want them spoken about they want their stuff there their, opp their opportunities, their things that are going on. Email us, message us. We'll put it up either on our social medias. We'll talk about it on here. We'll put it up on our Facebook stuff we've got. Let us know, and we're quite happy just to endorse you, if that makes sense. But like yeah, to yeah. sort of, or even just the word of mouth, because all it takes is us to say something, and it, it, uh, 10 other people might hear it and pass it on to someone else. Um, yeah, the film that we I've been sent the screen for was Slasher House 3. Oh. Yes. Sorry. So I thought we could sit and properly watch that and review it. And also we will be doing um the film as the Sal, so the Piglet, which is the film that was made by our friends from Rilla Thriller. Oh. And we hopefully we'll have an interview with them via Zoom about the film as well. So uh yeah. And then after that, I've been thinking that the week after that, or the, the episode after that, we might do something a little different. Thinking that we might do something that's a television thing rather than a film thing. Oh. Now, there are only 12 episodes of this. <laughs> okay. Six of them are on YouTube. Yes. And six of them are on Channel 4 because they were picked up by Channel 4. Okay. All I will say to you is I was introduced to it by your younger brother. <sighs> he introduced okay. me to this and I sat and watched the first two episodes of it with my mouth slightly open and a puzzled look on my face thinking, what the hell am I watching? Okay. So, okay. But next week... One short film, one um, feature film, and hopefully an interview. Okay. So until then, I would like to say... But I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. So... Thank you very much, Scott. That's okay. Thank you to everybody and anybody out there anywhere whether they're listening or not although if they're not listening how would they know i said that yeah maybe they'll pick it up on the ether ether they will or they won't <laughs> oh god all right uh, until next time we'll say goodbye bye bye <laughs> The Sci Fora Film Podcast. Mm -hmm.